i hope you have tried the sums before this lecture so please make sure if you haven't please pause the class pause the lecture make sure you try all the questions together because i'm going to go pretty fast over here because i'm just going to be discussing the solutions very quickly right so please make sure that you've gone through the questions very very carefully and tried let's see let's see the solutions so you understood the structure the fees the negotiation and all of that we just need to cover the sums over here we are covering the sums from the textbook itself so let's see the first question there is a funds a hedge fund and the value at the beginning is 110 million at initiation now i have this habit of drawing a timeline and all so i'll just do that so time zero it is 110 B, uh, B, uh, the fund charges a 2% management fee based on AUM at the beginning. Normally, if nothing is given in the question, we anyways assume that it is going to be charged at the on the AUM at the beginning, the management fee. And 20% incentive fee with a 5% soft hurdle. So we have a 2 and 20, 5% soft hurdle. We've got this. And it uses a high watermark. High watermark is there. Incentive fees are calculated on gains, net of management fees. Again, if nothing is given in the question, we always assume that the incentive fees is going to be calculated on the net of management fees. So after deducting the management fees, whatever is the profit left, on that we are supposed to be calculating the incentive fee. In uh, now this is the assumption that if nothing is given in the question, you will assume this. Even if this line is not stated in the question, we will assume that the management fee is calculated on the beginning value AUM and incentive fee is calculated net of fees. If the question states separately that it is independent, management fee and uh, incentive fee is independent, then you don't have to deduct management fees and then charge incentive. Then you charge incentive on the old profit, on the total profit without deducting management fee. Please make a note of this if you have to. Year-end values before any fee, so before calculation of any management fee or incentive fee, the year-end values are 100.2, 119. So year 1 is 100.2 and year 2 is 119. Calculate the total fees and the investors. Investors, so when we are looking at investors return, we are going to be looking at the LP's return, not the GP's return, because that is more of the management, right? So we are looking at the investor's return and not the uh, general partners return so we have to calculate the year and values and we also uh, the, the fees basically and the investors after tax after fee return there is no taxation etc details given normally taxes and all is not going to be incorporated in these questions anyways so if i'm looking at year one i can make columns and all that but since it's just a two-year question you know it's going to be quite easy so first of all i start with 110 at the end of the year no i don't have to start with 110 actually so even if I like try and make a table, actually your zero is not needed. Beginning value is 110. This is the opening value. Ending value before fee is 100.2 and 119. I think I have, I will need more space. I can make a table this way as well. So the beginning value, the fund started at 110. I will calculate the return over here. Okay. So I started the value at 110, ending value before any fee. So we've not yet calculated management fee. We've not yet calculated incentive fee. Before that, the value of the fund is 100.2. So basically, this fund made a lot of did a lot of strategies, made a lot of investments, generated a lot of return, and out of that, it was able to. It actually ended up making a loss of 9.8. Right now, because the GPs are managing the fund, therefore you'll have to pay them two percent of beginning value. So, two percent of beginning value is 2.2. This has to be paid. Incentive fee is supposed to be calculated on value 100.2 minus 2.2. So 100.2 is the value of your fund. Out of that, you pay 2.2 million to the management, GP. So after paying that, you're left with 98. 
98 obviously you do not get any incentive because you are making a loss so there is zero incentive fee because you need to cross the hurdle rate before making a uh, uh, payment for incentive fee so management fees out of the question 98 is your nav nav is going to be what closing nav is 3 mi uh, sorry 3 minus 4 and 5 3 minus 4 plus 5, basically you are ending NAV without deducting fees. Minus the fees, that is your closing NAV. And closing NAV becomes the opening NAV next day. Right? So, first of all, it's very simple. 98, 2%. 98, 2% is, I'll just take the numbers. So, although I know 1.96, but still. Where are the values? How? 1.96. So, $1.96 million is the management fees. Now, very important aspect over here. So, you cannot say that 98 plus 5%. What is 98 plus 5%? Obviously, it's going to be more than uh, more than 5, uh, less than 5. 98 into 5%, it has to be more than, uh, less than 5. 98 into 5 is anyways visible, 4.9 though, huh. 4.9, so 98 obviously your return is more than 4.9, even if you see 119 minus 1.96, because see in the question it is categorically stated, even if not stated we assume that you deduct management fees and on that profit you get the incentive fee, so 119 minus 1.96, sorry, what am I doing, 119, minus 1.96 first you have to pay management fee whether you're making profit or not it doesn't matter you have to pay the management fee first so after subtracting this i'm left with 119 17.04 117.4 is obviously more than 98 so therefore i deserve an incentive fee not sure yet first you have to check whether you have crossed the hurdle rate if you have crossed the hurdle rate will you get 20 percent of the entire profit or 20 percent of the profit above five percent you will get the 20% of the entire profit, not only the profit part of our 5% because it is a soft hurdle rate and not a hard hurdle rate. Because it is a soft hurdle rate, not a hard hurdle rate. But you will get an incentive only if you cross 5% return. The mistake that you will make over here or possibly make over here is calculating 5% or 98. There is a high watermark provision. High watermark does not mean that you will check only these values. That is, after the fund has started, high watermark means you will check all these values. What was the objective? What was the logic behind high watermark? The objective of high watermark was that on the same profit, on a profit that is not earned, you should not be getting, a GP should not be getting, general partner should not be getting return. I invested 110. You made a loss and made my portfolio 98. Your true profits, profits will actually be generated when the fund value is more than 110, not more than 98. Are you understanding? So you cannot check 5% on 98 because there is a high watermark provision also. Your incentive fee will be calculated only beyond the uh, highest level of the fund achieved in the past. That is 110 was there. The fund value of 110 was there. GP should be rewarded with incentive fee only after 110, only 5% beyond 110. So first of all, when you're looking at high watermark, is your return more than 5% uh, of 110? So 110 plus 5% is equal to 5.5 right and now if you notice this return 117.04 minus 110 is equal to 7.04 and this is more than 5.5 this is more than the soft hurdle rate your return 117.04 minus 110 why minus 110? Because you have a high watermark provision. You will get incentive fee or you will pay incentive fee to the general partner only if your returns are more than five and a half, uh, more than 5%. The return is more than 5%. Yes, my return is my return more than 5.5. Yes, my return is more than 5.5. My return is 7.04 beyond the highest previous value, 110. You can't check it over 98 because up from 98 to 110, you'll have to first recover your losses. Tell me, are you following this? Now, if it was hard hurdle rate, then my profit, my 20% incentive fee will be calculated on 7.04 minus 5.5. My incentive fee would have been calculated on 7.04 minus 5.5 if it was a hard hurdle rate. 
but in the question it is soft hurdle rate so my incentive fee is equal to 20% into 7.04 1.41 million so my closing NAV is going to be equals to 115.63 million that is my closing NAV so at the beginning of the year the fund value was 98 at the end of the year it is 119 so basically using the strategies on and all the hedge fund managers were able to generate a return of 21 million dollars on the investment on the AUM not on this on the AUM they will be getting their 2% management fee so 98 was their AUM they will get 2% of that irrespective of whether you made a profit or not after 119 minus 1.96 since 1.96 will be paid irrespective so that is a kharcha of the fund expense of the fund right that minus this is going to give you 117.04 now 117.04 is it more than five percent return the five percent return will not be calculated on 98 it has to be calculated on the high water mark so if say for example the fund value was 110 and here it became 112 or 114 then 114 minus management fee whatever is that let's say 114 minus management fee is 113 or 112 so uh, so your incentive fee will be calculated beyond 112 but since this value is small and this value is larger, so incentive fee will be calculated on value beyond 110 because that is the value that is the minimum, that is the investment value. You will not be paying incentive fee on profit that the GP has not earned. GP has not earned profit between 98 to 110. Investment was 110. First you get back to the investment level 110. If this was 112 net of management fee, so you got incentive fee from 112 to 110 earlier. So that is why we are not going to pay you incentive. We will pay you beyond 112. That is the whole idea behind the high watermark provision. Tell me, are you understanding this? Getting it? So therefore, 170.04 uh, minus 110. This is the return you generated, 7.04. Is this more than 5% hurdle rate? 5% hurdle rate is not 5% of 98. It is 5% of 110. Yes, I've generated more than 5.5. My return is 7.04. So how much incentive fee will I get? 20% of the return, 20% of 5.0 uh, of 7.04, or 20% of the difference between these two. The return above 5%. You will get 20% of the whole thing because it is a soft hurdle rate. So 20% into 7.04 it turns out to be my answer. That is my incentive fee. So you calculate, you deduct both the fees from 119. This is what you pay to the GP. This is what you pay to the GP and therefore the remaining amount is 115.63. That goes to, that goes to LP. So if I have to calculate the return for LP, over here, let me take another color. Over here, when I'm looking at the LP's return, it is 98 P1 minus by P0 minus 1, 98 by 100 minus 1. That is the answer. This will be 115.63 by 98 minus 1. See, understand logically. So I started with 110. This was the value contributed by the LP. This was the value per, uh, accruing to the LP. What is the LP going to get? Will the LP get 100.2? No. You'll have to first pay management fee only whatever is remaining. Irrespective of the profit, you'll have to pay this. Whatever is remaining, you will get. That is 98. So P1 by P0 minus 1. Holding period yield is very easy. Calculating return. So P1 by P0 minus 1. Obviously, that answer is going to be negative. Or you can do 98 minus 110. Divide by 110. Whatever way you want to do. P1 minus P0 by P0. Or P1 by P0 minus 1. These things are now basics for you. Now, obviously, you've already in you've already captured negative return. So your one became how much? What is this? I'm not looking at the numbers. Where is this here? Ten point nine percent. This is minus ten point nine percent. So one has already become. 0.891 one dollar invested has already become 0.891 now how much will 0.891 become 0.891 into something so what is the percentage over here so over here the percentages the answer is 18 percent 
This is a positive number plus 18 percent. So if I invested one dollar over here, one dollar will become 0 0.891. 0 0.891 though. Yeah. And then 0 0.891 will, beca will become into 1.18. One dollar one becomes 0 0.891 and that becomes into 1.18 at the end of year two. This is for LP. The return for investor is the return for LP limited partner, not GP. Tell me, are you comfortable till here? Sum is very easy. Achha, just one more thing. I skipped a calculation. Not skipped. Basically, there's another way of looking at it. I can also calculate 7.04 divided by 110 and then see what is the return percent. Is it more than 5% or not? What is the idea of hurdle rate? That is your return more than 5%. So I can calculate 110 into 5% and see whether my return is more than this. Or I can calculate 7.04 divided by 110 and then see if it is more than 5% or not. It's the same thing. Are you understanding? I can compare percentage with percentage. I can compare amount with amount for hurdle, for comparing with hurdle rate and deciding whether to whether it has crossed the hurdle rate or not. So that is fine. I hope. See if this question is okay. This should have been very, very okay with you. As in, you should have been able to solve it beforehand itself. This is the first question. Let's go through the next question. I told you I'm going to be going fast. I'm assuming you've done all the questions by yourself. So we've got a fund of fund investment where you're putting in $60 million at 1 in 10 structure. So we've got an FOF, 1 in 10. So I like to write all my points first. You're putting in $60 million. Now, with management and incentive fee calculated independently. Independently, okay, I'm just writing across like that. There is no notation like that. Independently, 40 million of the investment was allocated to alpha and 20. So we've got two funds, alpha, beta, we've put 40 and 20. So this FOF have invested, has invested into hedge fund A and hedge fund B, hedge fund alpha, beta, whatever. One year value of the fund is 46 and this one is 28. This becomes 46 at year one. This becomes 28. Both net of fees. So this is basically the hedge fund earned this money 40. It may have made it 48. It took 2 million dollars fees etc. Gave you 46. 20 became 29, 31 whatever. Took its fees and all and net of return is 28. So one layer of fees is already deducted to get the value of 46 and 28. One layer of fees. This hedge fund is also going to charge fees. Ye free mein kaam aapke liye. This hedge fund is also going to be charging you fees. Right? So they have already charged and deducted their fees and then the remaining amount is 46 and 28 respectively at the end of year 1. Calculate the investor's return for the year net of fees. Hey, this is too easy. Yaar. Forty six or forty five. They probably made a calculation error over here. Anyways, let's see. So when I'm looking at it, the hedge fund is basically the sum total. So basically, this they have given you forty six plus twenty eight, which is how much? Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy four. 74 million. So you invested sixty million, you're getting seventy four million back. The fund of fund is getting 74 million back. This is already net of fees. I've read it correctly, na? net of fees and all. Yeah, they've made a calculation error, I guess. Forget it. Tell me, are you comfortable till here? So 74 million is being returned to FOF. FOF will receive 74. Then management fee. 1% into 60. Your investment amount that is 0 0.60. Correct. Incentive fee. Now, incentive fee is given categorically in the question that the management and incentive fee is different. So basically, I'm getting a 74 million. I had invested a 60 million. 74 minus 60 is 14 million. 1, 4, 14. On 14, I'm going to get 10%. It's a 1 in 10 structure, not 2 in 20. 2 in 20, these people must have deducted already. And net net, they have given you 46 and 28. 
and net net they have given you 46 and 28 after deducting that 2 and 20 2 and 20 then you got this value net of fees but this is not net of fees this is what the fof is receiving and it is given in the question that management incentive fee is independent of each other if it is independent of each other we don't care about the deducting the management fee over here what is your profit what is my handwriting profit before fee is 74 minus 60 which is 14 so incentive fee is 14 into 10 percent which is 1.4 please understand because the management and incentive fee is independent of each other therefore you do not need to deduct management fee you don't have to do it net of fee and you cannot make this assumption if not given in the question if nothing is given in the question we assume you'll have to deduct management fee then incentive fee is going to be calculated that is what we do normally so this is incentive fee return after fees is how much you're deducting 2 out of 14 12 14 minus 0.6 minus 1.4 that is 12 so if you look at the return I'm just trying to show you something return before fees is not relevant over here return before fees is going to be equals to how much that is 14 by 60 your investment and return after fees is equal to 12 by 60 14 by 60 will be 14. the objective of this example actually is to show you that if you invested had you invested directly in hedge fund A and hedge fund B, your return would have been 23.33% because you did not want to take the pain of identifying which hedge fund to invest into and all of that, you invested through FOF. Because of that extra layer of 1 in 10 fees, 1 in 10 management fee and incentive fee, because of that you landed up with 20%. $2 million is what you have given in fees to fund of funds in order to choose the correct hedge funds. Now, you'll obviously, it's not that you should not be going through an FOF route. But you, have, uh, uh, but you have to evaluate that maybe it is, is it possible that without the, without the fund of funds, would you have identified these two good hedge funds which generated this kind of return for you? Or had you not hired a FOF to invest, maybe you would have landed up with a loss making hedge fund. In that case, giving $2 million worth of fees is absolutely making sense. So that you have to justify and you'll have to understand whether this amount of fees is justifiable or not. That is what we're looking at over here. Tell me, are you understanding this? So because you invested through fund of fund, you got a 20% return. If you had invested directly in hedge funds, please understand these two are already net of fees. Hedge fund has already charged the fees. You would have received 23.33% at your home in your pocket. Tell me, are you understanding this? Very easy example, yeah? Okay. Let's move to the next question. Let's see. I think there's another one. Yeah, so now we are going to be looking at one question on waterfall structure and clawback provision. So there is a P fund. It does one VC and one LBO. It invests 100 which becomes 130. In LBO it invests 100 which becomes 80. There is no 2% mentioned. Twenty percent is your carried interest, incentive fee, carried fee, performance fee, whatever you call it. What is the investor's return after investment incentive fee? Assuming the investment outcomes are realized in the same year, using two waterfall structure. Okay, how would the answers be affected if it was sold in year one and the LBO in year two? Okay, how would the clawback provision affect investor's return? All right.
with clawback same here Although American, European, and all is not going to matter in this case. Let's see. <clears throat> so let's let's start with the first part. So basically, the question is: You've invested. There is a PE fund. The PE fund has made two investments. One investment is in a VC. One investment is in a leverage buyout. In VC, the hundred investment becomes hundred twenty. In LBO, the hundred investment becomes eighty. Uh, so there is a profit of thirty. There is a loss of twenty. On an average, there is a profit of ten. Right now. Now we need to see. Say, for example, both these investments were liquidated in the same year, right? Now we have two options. One is an American uh, deal by deal structure. I hope you people remember this is deal by deal, and this is fund whole of fund. So all the deals are going to be combined together to calculate the return. So what is the investor's return? ठीक है इफ इट इज अ डील बाई डील बेसिस बेसिकली एन इन्वेस्टर हैज मेड अ टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ टू हंड्रेड ठीक है एन इन्वेस्टर हैज मेड अ टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ टू हंड्रेड ऑन विच इट हैज बिकम वन थर्टी प्लस एट्टी आई विल डू द सेम थिंग ओवर हियर यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड टू हंड्रेड इट हैज बिकम वन थर्टी प्लस एट्टी The difference between an American and a European method is going to be with respect to the amount of management fee paid, with respect to the amount of management fee paid. Sorry, with respect to the amount of management fee paid. What is the management fee? In American, there is zero management fee over here. In case of American, it is deal by deal structure. You will get twenty percent of this thirty separately. So minus. 20% into 30 the management fee is deal by deal management fee over here is zero management fee over here is 20% of 30 deal by deal basis for every deal you're going to be calculating the incentive fee separately there is no clawback provision right now we'll come to the clawback part later there is no clawback provision right now we'll come to the clawback provision later right now you're going to be calculating 20% of this 30 and over here 20% of zero obviously there is like there is a loss over here there is nothing you're going to get in this deal There is nothing you're going to get on this particular deal. So twenty percent of thirty is your management fee. So this is equal to you made how much? One thirty plus eighty is two hundred and ten. So profit of ten minus management fee six divided by two hundred, which is four by two hundred. That is two percent return. This is the return that the investor is getting. The limited partner is getting, not the general partner. Whenever we are talking about the investor's return, it is the limited partner's return we are calculating. Because, anyways, we cannot calculate GP's return per se because GP's investment is not given. That out of this hundred, how much is the GP's investment and all? We don't know how much money has GP put in. You cannot calculate return that way for GP, right? In case of European, what is the management fee? It is a whole of fund basis. There is a total amount of ten car return. The return is ten. So this is ten into twenty percent. That is the incentive fee, which is. Ten minus two by two hundred. Ten minus two is eight four percent. And we had already discussed that European is going to be advantageous for limited partner. American is going to be advantageous to the general partner because here on a deal by deal basis you're getting return on all the positives you'll get twenty percent separately. Negatives not set off. Over here, this minus twenty setting off this plus thirty, and only on the amount of ten net amount of ten are you getting management fee return over here. Uh, sorry, incentive fee return over here. But over here, you get the return on thirty separately, and minus twenty you don't have to give any return. There is no set off of losses with your profits in case of American structure, American waterfall structure. We've done this. We've understood the waterfall structure and everything. Tell me, is it okay till here? This is the investor's return. This is the investor's return. Now, say for example, as we are saying that you are going to be splitting this investment in year one and year two. So, year one you are selling VC. 
So in year one, what is going to happen? In year one, on an investment of 200, you made a profit of 30, you pay an incentive fee of 6, in year 2, you have a loss of 20, on an investment of 200, and you don't pay any management fee. In European as well, the answer is going to be exactly the same. In European as well, the answer is going to be exactly the same. Because you do not calculate the fund return. Say for example, this fund is going to go on for year, it's only year 1 and year 2. What if the fund goes on for year 3, 4, 5, 6? And there are not 2, but there are 20 investments made by the PE fund. So are you going to tell the general partner that you wait for 10 years and then I'm going to pay you the incentive fee? It does not work that way. Will you tell the general partner that you wait for 7 years, 8 years, 9 years. Once I've liquidated all the investments, then I'm going to start paying you incentive fee. That is not going to work. In year 1, what is your profit made? 30 on an investment of 200. You subtract 6 is your management fee, your incentive fee. Because a profit of 30, you're going to pay 20%. You're getting a return of how much? So it's 30. Uh, 30 minus 6. This is your investment 200. But actually I should not calculate it on 200. It will be a little wrong. Because actually your investment for this is only 100. For this is only 100. So it will be a little wrong. On investment of 200 you did not earn this 24. You are earning this. 30 kaise ah, Correct. But you see how staggering it becomes. Over here your return are 2% and 4%. You see the amount of change that is happening over here. I think we should still keep it at 200 only. percentage because your total investment is 200 on 200 in the first year you've earned a 24 if you're looking at it from a deal perspective i think they should be mentioning in the question if you're looking at it from a deal perspective on the deal of 100 investment you're making a return of 24 net of fees you made a 30 percent return on vc you paid 20 percent profit so 30 you pay 20 percent that is six percent you're left with 24 percent that is what it is I'm not looking at it from a fund by fund basis. I'm looking at it from a deal by deal basis over here. So I'm making a 24% return net of fees, 30% without net of fees. On a VC investment, I made a 30% profit. I pay 20% as incentive fee. I'm left with 24% myself. Obviously, in year two, I'm going to be making a loss, a 20% loss over here. This is a plus 30% if you're looking at it from a deal by deal basis. And this is minus 20%. Over here, the incentive is making plus 30, plus 24, but it is reducing profit. It is not reducing loss because there is no incentive fee if it is minus 20%. And this is going to be, European is going to have the same calculation. I know you're bound to have a little bit of confusion over here. Please understand, you cannot wait for 10 years and tell the general partner that after 10 years, I will calculate all the profit and then give you your profit share. In year one, how much profit you made? 30. Is it more than zero on a total basis? Yes, there are only two funds. One fund has been liquidated. Your incentive fee is going to be calculated on that profit of 30. Next year, 20 is my loss. And next year, from another third investment, if you had a profit of 20, 30, 40 or whatever, then you could have set off this 20. But we are assuming there are only two of these investments. And one got liquidated in year one and one got liquidated in year two. So European and American is going to give you the same answer. The same management fee is going to be generated by general partner in this particular case. If American and European are different, uh, as in if, uh, sorry, the investments are liquidated in two different years. So investments can be set off. The profit loss, the fund, whole of fund basis, the basis is only on a per annum basis. You can't set off one year's profit with a second. If you want to do that, what do we do? There is something called a clawback provision. There is something called a clawback provision. Let's see. So basically what happens is in case of clawback provision, if you notice, you paid a incentive fee of 6 million over here. We are not even talking about European over here because in European there is no clawback required. In European there is no clawback required. In American what is going to happen is, and especially also if you are looking at year 1, year 2 basis, even then it is going to be applicable. The idea is that my fund, my fund generated, let's say a profit of 30. You paid him a 6 million incentive fee. Then there was a loss of 20. 
ultimately your total profit is 10 you're supposed to pay 20 percent of 10 to how much did you pay six so ultimately in clawback provision what do we do in total profit is equal to 10 in total your incentive give me two minutes i'm explaining in a different way should be what are we seeing on a whole of fund basis even on a year one year two combined basis even if it is year one and then year two separate vc lbo doesn't matter even in that case clawback provision will be applicable what is the idea you did a plus 30 now you did a minus 20 then you did a plus 40 then you did a minus 50 then i don't care ultimately what is happening ultimately i have a profit of 10 if you combine all your funds and everything your profit is 10 if you combine year one year two together your profit is 10 your profit is 10 in totality how much are you supposed to get as an incentive fee 2 million if you got less than 2 million you take the balance if you have received more than 2 million you will have to pay back the differential you received 6 million you received 6 million you please pay back your 4 million because you deserve only 2 because you made a loss i will not give you 6 million and then you may end up making a loss and i will and not contribute as a part of loss See, understand if the total fund is 100 million and at the end of the fund it is 20 million loss. Understand, the fund is 100 million. The fund is at 100 million investment. At the end of 4 years, 5 years, whatever, it is at 80 million. The general partner is not supposed to pay 20% of this 20 million loss. But if the fund is 100, it goes up to 30. You took 20% of this 30 and then the fund closes at 110 you have to give back the profit taken please understand the difference your fund is 100 it went up to 130 it went down to 110 you took six over here you out of this six you have to give me back four because you deserve only two net net basis in totality whether you do year one year two you do waterfall you do a european american rainfall waterfall whatever it doesn't matter you deserve to, you will get to. If you took extra, you will give me back. But if your fund was 100 and it went down to 80, in that case, suppose this ended at 80 itself, your incentive fee is zero. It cannot be minus 20%. This minus is only happening because you had received something. You can't receive a share of profit and then end up giving me a net net loss. This was a plus six out of plus six. You are doing a minus four. If this fund is going to end at, let's say 80, you cannot ask him for 15 to 20% 10. You can only get back the six. So whatever was the incentive fee you had paid earlier, you can only claim that back clawback provision, whatever you had given extra. If that is not deserving anymore, if that is not adding up anymore, you claw back that amount. You cannot take out of my pocket. Whatever you had given earlier, you can try and take this. And that is why, you know, generally they have escrow accounts and all that. General partner will have to keep, they cannot withdraw the entire incentive fee. Some amount is there till the fund is shut and all of that. So that there is a, this thing, clawback and all the problem. You because say, for example, you want a clawback and general partner will say, sab kha ke uda diya. I've spent everything. That is not going to work. That is why at times we have escrow account and uh, uh, for a certain number of years for a term. That depends on your terms and conditions and your contract and all of that. That the general partner will have to keep a part of the incentive fee with the fund or something. And only once it is absolutely sure and everything, the terms work out, then you can take that money out. So if your fund ends up above this amount or at this amount, you take this amount out of the escrow account and GP gets it. If this goes down, then it is going to go back to the fund. To the LP basically. Tell me, are you understanding the clawback provision part? Clawback is that if I have given you extra, if I have given you incentive fee, and on a net net basis, in a totality basis, after a couple of years basis, whatever basis, you do not deserve that amount. In that case, whatever extra I had paid you, I will take back. Extra I had paid you, out of that I will take back. I cannot take back what you were not given. So you will not have any share in losses. You will basically be returning. Clawback provision is returning the incentive fee received because of the losses you made. Because maybe it was too early that you liquid. Maybe you liquidated all the good investments early and the bad investments, all the losses accumulated in the later years. So that is why clawback provision is working over here. Are you understanding?
you cannot ask him for losses below 100 you cannot ask him for money you cannot claw back the fee that was not given you can claw back from the fees that was given from the incentive fees that was given you can't even ask him back for the management fee management fee has absolutely got nothing to do with your profits and your fund value fund value as in you calculate it on AUM but whether your fund is loss making profit making or whatever it is management fee to milega management fee you're gonna get tell me are you comfortable with these questions it's easy